This is the lockpicking lawyer, and sometimes a seemingly insignificant design choice can have a massive impact on a lock security. And that's the case with this Abus Model 158CS Supercode Combination Padlock. It's a lock that I believe is only sold in Europe. Many locks with this multi-wheel configuration have a spring-loaded bar or plate that runs behind the wheels. You can see that part in this mechanism that I took out of an old key lockbox. Normally, I would take a Covert Instruments notch decoder, slip it in between a code wheel and the lock body, and use the notch to grab onto that bar and pull it into the back of the wheels. That gives me enhanced and unambiguous feedback as to what's going on in the lock and how to decode it. Now, in my opinion, Abus messed up on this lock by using a spring that is far too powerful. That means I don't need the notch decoder to pull that bar into the wheels because the spring does it for me. All we have to do to open this up is find the wheel that's binding the hardest, that is, the one that is hardest to turn, and move it to the spot where it's the easiest to turn. You then repeat that process until the lock opens. It's probably not the fastest way in, but it is more than fast enough for practical entry, and it has the added benefit of not requiring any tools. So let's give that a try, but first we need to change the combination to something I don't already know. We're gonna do that by putting this into change mode, then with the wheels facing away from me, give them a good scramble. Okay, that should be enough. We'll cover those wheels up, put it back into operating mode, and scramble the wheels one last time. Okay. I now have a lock to which I do not know the combination. Let's see if we can open it up without using a tool. Just going through each wheel, looking for the loosest spot in its travel. We'll have to hit each wheel multiple times. And just that quickly, we got it open, 4772. Okay, folks, like I said, it's not the fastest way in, but it is more than fast enough to be practical. And that's not a problem just for the obvious reason, but also because it shouldn't be possible at all. A little, seemingly insignificant thing, like a spring that is slightly too powerful, makes us vulnerable to one of the most simple attacks there is. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.